Hello there. My name is Elizabeth Ishala. I'm the president and founder of Women on the Threshing Floor International Ministry with a vision of transforming women into wise, precious, priceless pearls. I have a strong passion to help you live again, to help you become all that God has created you to be. So regardless of what your circumstances may be, I tell you what, you can live again. You can truly live again. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, share, and also drop a comment in the comment section below to help us know how you feel about our program. And if you have a topic you'd like us to talk about, we'll be glad to have it. Thank you, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we'll be dealing with the topic, how to be a good wife. You know, this topic was given to me by my husband. While I was preparing for my videos, he just walked in and said, baby, I'd like you to do a new topic. And I was like, what's that? He said, can you talk to people on how to be a good wife? It made me laugh. And I'm very excited that I obeyed or rather I followed his desire. So today I'll be dealing with how to be a good wife. Not because I'm a perfect wife, I'm still work in progress, but I'll be sharing with you some of my experience and my understanding of how to be a better wife or to be a good wife. So are you new to marriage and you're trying to set the right tone for your future? Or have you been married for some time, but you are still confused about how to be a good wife? If you're looking for ways to make your husband happy, to make your children happy, here are some keys that can help you understand what a man needs from his wife. By doing some of the things I'll be sharing with you, it will help transform your marriage little by little. I always say to people, if it is good, do it again. Now let's start by reading the Bible in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 from verse 1 to 6. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 1 to 6. It says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wife. That means if, the, if your husband is not part of the word, part of the body of Christ, by your actions, by your character, he will be won over. Verse 2 says, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So it's still talking about your character, your way of talking. Verse 3 says, Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So this verse is saying, let it not just be your outward appearance, let it not just be about beauty, about how you look, but let it be about the hidden man. The hidden man is the real you. Let that hidden man be fed with the word of God, so much so that you begin to act like Christ. That's what that verse is saying. Verse 5 says, For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves be in subjection unto their own husbands. So this is saying that, okay, the women of old did all of these things, and at the end of the day, they were in subjection to their own husbands. I've seen so many women show so much respect to all other men except their husbands. They respect all other men except their own husbands. But the Bible admonishes us that we should show all of this respect to our own husbands. The last verse, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, 
and are not afraid with any amazement. I know sometimes some of these things sound old-fashioned because you just be wondering, why should I call my husband Lord? I'd rather call him sweetheart. I'd rather call him... But what the Word of God is saying here, it's not about you calling him Lord in quotes, but it's about you acting like he's truly the leader of the team. Praise the Lord. So I just want to share with you a few tips that will help you. Let me start with sex. Every husband needs sex. Sex is a physical need of your husband. It's not just a want. Your husband needs sex to feel closer to you, to connect with you on a deeper level, and to release the tensions and pressures in his life. Not only does he need it, but he needs you to want it and enjoy it. True, ladies. Because sometimes, some wives just allow their husbands. It's not as if they enjoy it. But I want you to know that if you allow your husband, and he can see that you truly, truly enjoy sex, it makes him happy. He needs to know that you enjoy being with him and connecting with him on this level. He needs to know that he satisfies you on every level. So, sex is very, very important and it will help you to be a good wife, I tell you. I've seen a lot of women complain about sex. They are tired. And that's what I say to young ladies. Don't indulge in sex because the time is coming when you are married. You will get tired if you exert all your energy before you get married. God does not like it. That is one sin that is against the body. Another thing is honor and respect. Husbands need honor and respect. How do you treat your husband? Do you actually honor them? To honor him means to value him. Do you value your husband? When you talk to him, do you talk to him like you value him? When you talk about him, because I've seen so, women, so many women talk about their husbands in a very rude manner. They speak badly about their husband behind their husband. That's dishonor. Honor him. Honor begets honor. Respect him. You know, this is also a God-given need of your husband. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, Paul writes, However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Notice, it doesn't say to only respect him. If, so there's no condition. It says respect your husband, period. You know, because respect, like my husband will always say, is what he eats. My husband will tell you, I can get food from a restaurant. If I choose not to honor God, I can get sex outside. But you see that respect, that's what you should serve me, breakfast, lunch, dinner. So it's a need that God put on the inside of them. You want the best from your husband. Honor him. Respect him. So like I said earlier, a woman speaks love. A man speaks respect. God created man and woman with two different needs. So we can meet each other's needs. Your man can't meet his need for respect by himself. He can't. He can't be respecting himself. I mean, he can't show that respect to himself. You know, because it's a need that God put inside of him. But he can meet this need elsewhere. He can get it from work. He can get it from other people. He can even get it from other women. Where a man finds respect, that's where his heart will be. Have you ever heard the stories of a man that has probably a housemate that is not even educated? Meanwhile, she, he has this sophisticated woman that is so educated, but his heart is drawn to the maid. You know why? Men love service. Men love respect. The maid respects him. She humbles herself before him. Now, I'm not saying as a wife you should become the maid. I know, don't misunderstand me. I'm just saying you should humble yourself, humble your heart, and show respect to the man you call your husband. Because by nature, it's where he finds respect. That's where his heart will be drawn to. So where do you want your husband's heart to be? At work? At the bar? Hanging with his friends? 
or at home with you and your family. Now the question is, how do you honor your husband? Or how do you meet his need for respect? Number one, treat him better than he deserves. Treat him like the man you know he can be. Treat him like your king. How do you even serve him when you're serving him food? How do you go about it? Do you just fling the food? Do you treat it anyhow? Or you treat him like royalty? Number two, I know this one can be, you know, a hard one when you know your husband just doesn't deserve it. When you honor him, even when he doesn't deserve it, what will happen to him is that it, it will make him live up to the man, you know, that you see in him. So praying about it while you do won't hurt anything. So honor him, whether he deserves it or not. It is your duty. And like I say to people, I am honoring my husband. I am respecting him as worship to God. So if honoring him is worship to God, why won't I honor him? Another way of honoring your husband is that you should allow him make decisions. Allow him make decisions. I know sometimes you want to speak your mind. You want to be the one to lead. Listen, when you start leading your husband, that's not what God intends. God's intent is that the husband leads. So if you allow him to lead, somehow along the line, you will bring out the best of him. Allow him to make those decisions in your family. So what I'm saying in essence is that you should not overpower your husband with your opinion. No matter how intelligent you are, no matter how smarter than him you think you are, allow him, you know, and with a lot of wisdom, he will come by. Then another need of a man, you know, or another thing that you should do that will help you become a better wife is to give him affection. Husbands need affection. Sometimes affections can often be overlooked. You know, we tend to think men just want sex for affection. But men need us to touch them. They need us to hug them. They need us to be tender with them outside of the bedroom. So they need you to ask them questions like, how was your day? And then listen to them while they tell you. Give them hugs. Kiss them. You know, we have a culture in my, house, in my, in my marriage that has helped us, you know, so much. It has helped us. We have this culture of hugging. You know, no matter what we are feeling, no matter the arguments we just had, we have this laid down uh, rule about hugging at particular times. Like, if he's going out, it's compulsory he hugs me. If I'm going out, it's compulsory I hug him before I leave. You know, those things have come to help us. That even when we are upset with each other, it's like a culture. You know, we just come and hug. And then even if I'm, I'm frowning, I will hug him and I'll be on my way out and all of that. It has helped to, to bind us together in ways that I cannot even explain. Men love to be kissed. When he gets back home, and probably you're the one at home and he comes in to meet you, you should be able to hug him, kiss him. Don't be afraid that a little affection is going to lead to the bedroom. You know, so, some women are so tired of sex that once the man smiles, they will frown. Once the man says, um, sweetheart, how are you doing? In fact, he sends you a romantic text in the afternoon. You're already scared. Oh, God. You're, you're thinking in your mind that it's sex. It's sex. No, no, no. It's not always the case. Sometimes he just needs that affection. And let me tell you, our men are faced with all kinds of temptations. So when they stretch out to you, please stretch out to them too. Now, I'm going to be honest. Affection doesn't come easily for me by my nature. Mm -mm. I'm a very, what kind of very serious-minded person. You know, but when I came to realize that this adds um, fun and sweetness to my marriage, I started practicing it. I practice it. I didn't come from an affectionate family, you know, where, you know, everybody just comes and they're hugging, hugging. No, no, that's, that was not my background. But the family I have right now, affection is one, one of our strengths. We teach the children affection, my husband and I, affection, and it's very, very beautiful. Another thing that your husband needs is approval. Give him your approval. 
Husbands need their wives' approval. Your husband needs your approval. He needs to know that you approve of him as a man. He needs to know that you approve of him as the head of the family. Even when things get tough, when your husband has your approval, he feels like he can scale Mount Everest. You may disagree with this and say this will be an emotionally dependent relationship. My advice is that you should strive to be your husband's biggest supporter, his biggest champion, his biggest cheerleader. Let him know that you approve of him. Tell him that he's doing a great job. You know, let him know in words how proud you are of him for standing up and leading your family. Approve of your husband. If he does little things, thank him for it. Appreciate him for paying your children's school fees. Appreciate him for taking care of your family, for standing as a man. And you know, sometimes, even if he's not doing what you want, thank him in anticipation, you know, for what you want him to become. I'm telling you. And in a short time, you begin to see him act how you want instead of nagging him into what you want. Well, I've come to the end of today's topic on how to be a better wife or how to be a good wife and I hope you enjoyed it. I believe you enjoyed it and I believe that this topic has touched you. Please do leave a comment or your testimonies on our comment section below. And do you know that you can continue to enjoy these nuggets and words of encouragement by subscribing to our YouTube channel? I'd like you to click on the subscribe button to get notified whenever we come online. Help us like, share, and also drop your thoughts on the comment section. Remember, pray about everything and worry about nothing. Till I come your way again next week. Thank you and God bless you. Ciao.